It's Majin vs. Majin in the semi-finals of the Gunpla World Tournament in my review of Gundam Build Fighters, episode 22. Let the robotic rampage rock on, my friends. This was another fantastic episode of GBF. It was a complete package episode, and that's because it had everything. It had awesome mobile suit battles, lots of plot twists, and hilarity out the wazoo. Gundam Build Fighters this week was another awesome episode. It sort of followed the tradition that they've been doing for the last couple of weeks, which is the first half of the episode is a lot of build-up and comedy, and the second half of the episode is pretty much your badass gunpla battle. And that's what they did this week, but there were a few plot twists and a lot of little things I want to talk about. First and foremost, a lot of funny stuff this week. I loved the scene at the beginning this week when Sheena and the very, very smoking hot Rinko Iori appear at Sei in Reiji's room, and when they walk in, Ayla just walks right out of the shower, just wearing a towel, and of course they think the immediate wrong thing here, and they decide that Ayla's not going to stay in this room anymore, she's going to come stay with them, and then eventually they have this scene where they decide that Ayla is going to stay at Say's house for a little bit, until she can get back on her feet and figure out where the hell she's going to live. And when we get away from this, there's another scene that's very important where Nils Nielsen comes to Saiyan Reiji's room and he wants to, you know, ask them, so what was the deal with the big, blinding, glowing, golden light that no one ever seems to want to talk about? You know, because I want to know what's up with that. And Reiji's just like, oh, it was just this rock here. You want to look at it? And Nils is like, yes! So he takes this and he goes away. And at the end of the episode, we actually figure out that this thing is basically a Plasky particle stone. It's like a physical embodiment of the Pulaski Particles, and that's all they want to tell us about it, and that's when we move on to what's really important this week, which is seeing a Majin go up against a Majin in a really awesome battle, and what I love most about this is when we're introduced to his first opponent, it's actually this old guy who's like 78 years old, he's like the oldest gunpla battler there, and I was really hoping it would be him, I just think that would be a really cool twist. But all of a sudden, he runs into Mr. Rawl, and then he has a heart attack, and he goes to the hospital. And this is when his grandson, Julian McKenzie, comes in. And Julian was apparently one badass gunpla battler, and he was one of the candidates for being the next Majin. But he decided, you know what, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go off and go on my own path, because the second Majin really sort of fucked things up. Because he had this ideology where, basically, you need to crush your enemies see them driven before you, and hear the lamentation of the women, and apparently Julian's not down with the whole Conan shtick, so he decides he's going to fight for his grandfather, or really I should say he's forced into it, because his grandfather basically sort of passes out as he gives him his gunpla and tells him he has to fight in his steed. But this is all just a bunch of bullshit, because it was all just a plan to get his son back into gunpla. His opponent, of course, is the current Majin, Tatsuya Yuki, and Tatsuya is actually going to be using a brand new gunpla in this battle, which is definitely the most refreshing thing about this episode. He's using the Exia Amazing, and it's actually not even completed yet, and I'm imagining it's going to get even more upgrades, because when you actually see it in this episode, it pretty much just fights like the regular Exia from Gundam 00. It has its big sword, it has the Trans Am system so that it can move really fast, it has the guns, and that's pretty much it. But getting to see Tatsuya use this and the fact that the Gundam is actually fighting against the F-91 Imagine is really awesome. It's his very own custom version of the titular one from Gundam F-91. And basically it just has a red color scheme and he's able to use the Bat Jet Stream system which allows him to move very fast. So basically that's the whole premise of this battle is seeing these two go up against each other and use their intense speed abilities and swords and guns. It's a very simple Gundam battle. But it's pretty damn intense, and it's really the build-up to it that I think what made this episode so entertaining. Because the actual battle itself is probably not the best battle in the series. You know, I still think the best one is probably Nils Nilsson going up against the Star Build Strike. But still, it was very intense just finally getting to see the Exia finally emerge, something from Gundam 00. Uh, and just getting to see him finish him off with that big massive cut with the giant sword is awesome because... I do like beam sabers in the Gundam anime series. To me, they're basically just big lightsabers, and lightsabers kick ass. But I love the Exia's massive, like, giant surfboard-shaped blade. It's just so intimidatingly awesome, and I love the way he used it in this episode. And again, it was just a really good episode in general. It had a lot of pretty decent animation, a lot of laughs, a ton of cameos, and just little moments. Uh, just And I liked the whole thing with Julian. I thought that was an interesting concept because it's kind of similar to the uh, the Renato brothers. You know, They showed them a little bit in the series, but then suddenly when they decided to introduce him, they became really important. And I'd never heard of this Julian guy before, but the minute he was in, they, they got through his whole backstory real quick. It didn't impede on anything. 
and it moved really, really quick. The pacing of the series is great, and if anything, it doesn't really repeat anything. I really am not seeing any repeat animation, which is something that has plagued the Gundam anime series for a long time, and it can be anything from as simple as to just shooting a beam animation to going through a transformation sequence. They tend not to do it in this one, and that allows each episode to be very fresh. What I can say is the finals are coming up. It's going to be Saiyan Reiji going up against Tatsuya Yuki, the third Majin Kawaguchi, and it's going to be awesome. It looks like next week's episode is going to be a little break before the battle. It looks like it's going to be like the eve before the final matches, and it looks like that even Reiji and Sei are going to be having an exhibition match against each other for fun, and I just think that's going to be really cool because I really want to see Sei battle again. We really haven't seen him battle like barely at all in the series, and that's understandable. He's definitely more of a builder. But I'd like to see how far he's come, and it would be really cool if Sei's father actually decided to show up for the finals. I know he's hanging out at the shop, but it's not like he's running it or anything, and he's probably watching this shit on TV. He's He has to be. He's, like, obsessed with Gundam. Why would he not? So I imagine he's probably going to show up, and I'm really excited to see what the Exia's final form is going to be when it goes up against the Star Build Strike, which might even get another upgrade. I think that would be really cool. I personally want to see a little bit more from Reiji and his whole backstory with Aryan because they brought it up a little bit more in this week's episode and pretty much everybody just laughed about it. But there's something really important going on here with the Plasky Particles and where he's from and it's still sort of hard to determine where he's even from. If it's even from this world, this dimension, from space, they're really not being very clear about it and it still amazes me that 22 episodes into this series they've revealed jack shit about Reiji. It just... It blows my mind that they haven't, like, decided to have an episode where Say just, like, sits down and he's like, So, dude, like, what the hell's up with you? So, like, where are you from? And why did you teleport that one time, like, 20 episodes ago? What's up with that? But otherwise, great episode, a lot of really cool action, full package of an episode. Check it out if you were following the series. It'll pump you up for the big epic finals, which are just around the corner. So if you guys had a chance to check out this week's episode of Gundam Build Fighters, I'd love to hear your thoughts about it. You could tell me with your comments below. You could tell me about your favorite funny moments, what you thought about the battle between the two Majins, and what you hope to see from the future and finale of the Gunpla World Tournament. Remember guys, before you leave, make sure and hit that like button so you can give this video a thumbs up. It's one of the best ways to support our videos. And remember guys, you can check us out on Facebook, on Twitter, and remember to subscribe to the channel if you have not already. I will see you next time, guys. Super Kami Guru 9000, out.